Hey everybody, welcome to Church Online. To kick off this new year, I am happy to be announcing the beginning of our new life group starting on January the 10th. Join us in person or online. We are going through the book of Colossians with Louis Giglio. Details can be found on our website, on our Facebook page. You can follow us on Instagram or subscribe to our YouTube channel. I just want to say Happy New Year, everyone. It's January. January is a special time of year, right? It's all about the new year, new you, fresh start, new beginning. And even if you're not into New Year's resolutions, like me, not so much into New Year's resolutions, I kind of suck at the follow through. Like, great plan, great idea, I got this, I can do this. And then, you know, two weeks later, not so much. But for those of you that are, you know, into New Year's resolutions, more power to you. You got this, you can do it. Even if you're not into New Year's resolutions, January still seems like the perfect time of year to look back and see what we've accomplished or what we didn't accomplish that we wish we had. What was good, what was bad. It's a great time to ask ourselves, where are we headed in this new year? What direction am I headed? What are my goals? We're gonna dig into the Bible and see what Paul says in Philippians about moving forward and reaching goals. It sounds like this. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. Paul has some great advice for pursuing goals, but not just any goals. The message version of this verse says, I'm not saying that I have it all together, that I have made it, but I'm well on my way reaching out for Christ, who so wonderfully reached out for me. Friends, don't get me wrong. By no means do I count myself an expert in this, but I've got my eye on the goal where God is beckoning us onward to Jesus. I'm off and running. I'm not turning back. When Paul talks about a goal, he's not talking about you know, adding more fiber to his diet or saving money in the bank or playing a new instrument or signing up for an online class. Paul is specifically talking about a spiritual goal, his relationship with God, a life goal of following Jesus. Paul is talking about pursuing his relationship with God. And when he's talking about the spiritual goal, he says, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. He says, I haven't achieved this. He confesses that he has not reached the spiritual goal. This is encouraging because none of us have reached that goal. And you may say, hey, hey, wait a minute. Um, I go to church, I read my Bible, I pray, and God answers my prayers. I make good decisions, I feel his presence, I think I'm there. I think I've reached that spiritual goal. Well, I have some bad news for you and some good news for you. The bad news is you're not there. You haven't reached that spiritual goal because none of us have. We're humans and we make mistakes and we give in to temptation and we mess up. None of us have reached that spiritual goal. But the good news is that we haven't reached it because there's more. No matter how close you get to Jesus, there is more. The closer you are to God, the more you realize how big He is. There is always more, more to learn, more to experience, more opportunities to serve Him, more opportunities to draw closer to Him, to become more like Him. None of us have reached that spiritual goal, and so we need to keep striving towards what is ahead, continually pursuing Jesus. And Paul shares in his letter to the people in Philippi what he does to keep chasing after that spiritual goal. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. How many of you struggle with remembering things? When I was younger and I had four little kids at home, um, I don't know what happened to my brain. It was like it went into overdrive and it just stopped working or something. And I found myself saying things like, no, I don't remember putting the milk in the cupboard instead of the refrigerator. No, I don't remember putting your folded socks and underwear into the bathroom closet. I don't remember these things, but it gets better. Moms and dads with small kids, you will get your memory back. 
I am more in the walk into the room and forget why I went there phase now. A few years ago, as a joke, um, for my husband's birthday, his sister-in-law, just to indicate that he was getting old, gave him a prank present. And in this present, there was a days of the week pill box. There was a container for his false teeth. And there was a package of don't forget stickers. They were like little reminder stickers that you would put around the house, like turn off the lights, flush the toilet. And there's one that is still on our dryer today. And it says, clothes go in the dryer, food goes in the microwave. Usually, if we forget something, it's not a good thing. Being forgetful, not so good. Unless, unless you're following the advice of Paul in Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. This totally makes sense. If we're going to press on towards a goal, if we are going to be moving forward to what God is calling us to, then yeah, some things we're gonna to wanna to let go of. We're gonna to want to forget, especially if there's things in our past that we never really wanted to have in our past in the first place. I don't know how many of you know Paul's personal story, Paul who wrote Philippians, or what kind of things that he had in his past, but I'll tell you that it wasn't good. Before Paul became a follower of Jesus, he persecuted Christians. He was one of the men responsible for the death of Stephen. He was the first recorded Christian who was killed because of his faith. Paul's one of the men that was involved in that. Talk about a shady past. Paul could have let himself be gripped with guilt or shame, but he knew that he was going to have to let go of that if he was going to be moving forward and pressing on towards the goal. There were other things in Paul's past that he would have wanted to let go of, not because of sin, but because of circumstance. He was shipwrecked, he was beaten, he was no longer the persecutor, he was now being persecuted. In fact, when he wrote this letter to the Philippians, he was imprisoned for his faith. So I understand this. If Paul is gonna press on towards that spiritual goal, if he's gonna to strive towards what God is calling him to do, then he's gonna to have to let go of those things in his past. And it's the same for us. Some of you may look back and see times in your life when you were, were tempted to sin and you gave in over and over again, or you let yourself be influenced by someone who was not a good influence. Or maybe you turned away from God. You stopped going to church. Maybe you're not really looking into your Bible very much anymore. Or maybe you haven't walked away from God at all. But there are still times that were really hard for you in situations where you have been hurt and you're still carrying that hurt around with you. This is what Paul says in this verse. He says, forgetting about it. We can't do anything about the mistakes that we've made in the past or the way that people have treated us, but we can move forward to what God is calling us to. Now, have the things that we've gone through in the past made us stronger? Probably. Should we learn from the things that have happened in the past? Yes, for sure. But if we want to keep moving forward, like verse 14 calls it, pressing towards the goal, then we have to leave the past in the past so that we can move on to what God is calling us to now. Now, I'm on board with that. That makes sense to me. Learn from our mistakes, move on, forgive, forget. But what makes me dig into this verse a little bit more is that Paul doesn't just say, forget about all the bad stuff. Like, what about the good stuff? Why would Paul be asking us to forget what's behind us when there could be some really good stuff back there? It's not all bad. You guys probably have some really cool stuff in your past, things that you have accomplished, things that you can be proud of. It wasn't all bad for Paul either. He had some things in his past that he could be proud of. He went on missionary journeys and started churches all over the known world. In the same letter, where Paul writes to the Philippians, he actually says a few verses before what we just read, that if he wanted to, he could have bragged about how good of a Jew he was, following everything that the Jewish law had set out for him. You see, Paul accomplished things in his life that others would have been impressed with. So why would Paul suggest that we forget what's in the past when there could be some pretty good things back there? 
problem is that sometimes when the past is really good, then we don't want to move on from there. We're like, oh, wait, 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 this is good. This is good. I want to hold on to this instead of moving forward and pressing on to what God has for us. Let's say that someone asks you, how is your relationship with God? And you could say, oh, it's good. You know, three years ago, I had this experience in church and I really felt the presence of the Holy Spirit and it was like so powerful. It was really good. But what about today? Are we pressing on towards a goal or are we living in those moments? What if someone was to ask you, what are you doing with your life that really shows a love for God and for other people? And you could say, well, a couple of years ago, I helped to plan a missions trip. Or maybe you taught Sunday school, like for years you taught Sunday school. Or maybe you used to volunteer for community dinners or for a soup kitchen. This verse says to forget about the past because God wants us to move forward. He wants us to press on and to move into what he has for us now. As you move into this new year, ask yourself, what are the things in my past that are stopping me from pressing on towards this spiritual goal? What are the things that I have in my life that I might need to let go of so that I can move forward in my relationship with God? Is there sin that you haven't turned away from? Are there hurts that you're still carrying around with you? Are there moments in your life that were so good that you're not looking to move on? Do you prefer to hang out in the past because there is stuff back there that you don't want to let go of? Paul is saying to forget what's in the past and strive forward to what's ahead, always reaching out for Christ. Verse 14 says, reaching out for Christ who is wonderfully reaching out for me. We need to forget and leave behind anything that holds us back from pursuing our relationship with God. There is, however, one thing that we should not forget. One thing that carries us through towards our spiritual goal. One thing that God's people have been forgetting over and over again. There is a study from John Hopkins and it shows a list of the five things that people forget the most. Number five, is, what was number five? <laughs> I forgot. Number five is forgetting what other people have said. What did they say? Can't remember what they said. Number four was forgetting your words. You try to put a sentence together and you know what you want to say, but you can't find the right words. Number three, telephone numbers. And that makes sense. Forgetting telephone numbers because we just have the, our contacts now. I just push a button and it will call and you, you no longer have to memorize people's numbers. But this is something that people forget, telephone numbers. And number two, people forget where something is. Where is that? I just saw that the other day. I can't find it anywhere. Where is that? And the number one thing that people forget is other people's names. What's their name again? I mean, you can only ask someone their name so many times before it's just embarrassing and you're just like, I can't ask because I should know it by now. That's the number one thing that people forget is other people's names. But God's people throughout the Bible struggle to remember something else. They struggle to remember who God was and what he had done for them. In the Bible, the prophet Isaiah did not forget what God had done for them. He said that he would make a list of all the things that God had done for his people so that they could praise God for it. You find it in Isaiah 68. It says, I'll make a list of God's gracious dealings, all the things God has done that need praising, all the generous bounties of God, his great goodness to the family of Israel, compassion, lavished, love, extravagant, he said, without question, these are my people, children who would never betray me. So he became their savior. In all their trouble, he was troubled too. He didn't send someone else to help them. He did it himself, in person. Out of his own love and pity, he redeemed them. He rescued them and carried them along for a long, long time. Isaiah is saying, this is who our God is. This is what he's done. Remember what God has done for you. But then in the very next verse, it goes on to say, yet they rebelled and grieved the Holy Spirit. See, God had rescued his people over and over again, but each time they forgot about him. God had rescued them out of the terrible things that were taking place in Egypt, including the 10 plagues, but then they forgot about his goodness and they started complaining as soon as they reached the wilderness. 
He led them to a land that he had promised them, but then when they got there, they forgot about the mighty power of their God and they were afraid to enter because of the people who were living there. And then when God gives them the promised land, they forget about him and they start worshiping idols. If you look at Psalm 78, verse after verse is talking about the, def the different rescue missions that God had performed for his people. But then in verse 40, it says, how often they rebelled against him in the wilderness and grieved him in the wasteland. Again and again, they put God to the test and that's the Holy One of Israel. They did not remember his power the day he redeemed them from the oppressor. God's people throughout history had something that you could call spiritual forgetfulness or spiritual amnesia. And sometimes, many times, just like God's people throughout history, the same thing can happen to us. Spiritual forgetfulness, where we forget all of the things that God has done for us in the past. And because of this memory problem, we find ourselves turning away from him or making mistakes or detouring from the goal of pursuing him. If we forget that God brought us to where we are, then we're gonna to try to move forward on our own and that doesn't work. When we forget God's goodness, we deny him power in our lives. Throughout history, God rescued his people over and over again. And he does the same for us. But in moments of crisis or whenever we're challenged with something difficult or we're in these like high pressure situations, sometimes even if we're just going about our daily routine, we forget who God is and what he's done. When you look back over your life, even if you didn't see it, God has always been there with you and for you. As you move forward, pursuing that goal that Paul was talking about in Philippians, we need to remember who God is and what he's already done for us. I want to challenge you as we begin this new year that you strive for that spiritual goal and that you forget the things that hold you back, but remember the God who holds you up. If you're thinking, maybe this is the year Maybe this is the year that God is going to call me to press on and move forward in my relationship with him. It's not a maybe. It is the year because every year is the year that God wants to draw you closer in a relationship with him. A while ago, our students did a series about letting go of the past and moving on to the future where God is calling you. And I wrote a spoken word and my friend Violet is going to share that with you right now. But first, let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for your presence with us, Lord. And God, as we move forward into this new year, God, I pray that you will just remind us of all the great things you've already done for us, God, how you've already held us up, and how no matter what we're facing in this new year, that you can see us through it. God, please help us to forget and let go of the things that hold us back when we're pursuing you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Remember to forget God's not finished with you yet. Maybe your past has been amazing, it's been great. A hundred reasons to celebrate. Award-winning glory days, you did the work, you earned the praise. Everyone knows it, you're a star. Those shining moments have made you who you are. But there's more, so much more. So open the door to what God has in store. Something new for you to do. And maybe your past hasn't been what you wanted it to be. Maybe you're ashamed of where you've been, overcome with the temptation to sin. You fought and you fought, but you didn't win. Maybe you want to leave the past behind and you've tried, but you feel like you're tied to the shame and the guilt that grips you inside. And those challenges, they made you strong, but that's not where you belong. If you think that, then you're wrong. It's time to move on. Feel like you're caught up in the mistakes that you've made? Don't be afraid, that debt is paid. Jesus didn't die on the cross for nothing. He died on the cross for something. He died on the cross for someone. And that someone is you. So don't look back, don't rewind, don't change your mind, leave the past behind. Because God has something new for you to do. So remember to forget, God is not finished with you yet.